Good morning, everyone, in church and online. Welcome to our Novena Mass in honour of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Our celebrant this morning is Father Peter Burns. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. You're all very welcome, those of you here with us in the church, and all of you online who are joining us, you're welcome. Today our vestment is red because we're celebrating two martyrs. They lived and died in the third century. Saint Cornelius was Pope, and Saint Cyprian was a bishop. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist on this Novena Day, we pause for a moment asking for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God our Father, in Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, you have given your people an inspiring example of dedication to the pastoral ministry and constant witness to Christ in their suffering. May their prayers and faith give us courage to work for the unity of your church. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. During his life on earth, Christ offered up prayer and entreaty, aloud and in silent tears, to the one who had the power to save him out of death. And he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was son, he learnt to obey through suffering. But having been made perfect, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. He looks on his servant in her lowliness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud-hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, said the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As the father and mother of Jesus stood wondering at the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, you see this child, he is destined for the fall and for the rising of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is rejected, and a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of the gospel brought out our sins. So, as I said in the beginning, today we are celebrating Saints Cornelius and Cyprian. But yesterday we celebrated Our Lady of Sorrows. And so I thought it would be appropriate to say something about yesterday's feast. We've heard in this gospel, this short gospel from the second chapter of Luke, what Simeon said to Joseph and Mary when they brought the child Jesus to the temple. He told her that a sword would pierce her soul a sword would pierce her heart. And we see that prediction of Simeon most clearly as Jesus hangs on the cross. And Mary, of course, stood beneath that cross. And as we say in the Novena Prayer, we think of you, Mother, at the foot of the cross, your heart must have bled to see your son in agony. 
the sword had pierced her soul. Her heart is broken. Her heart is bleeding. In the Gospels, as you know, we're told very little about Mary. But from what we are told, it's very easy to see what kind of heart she had. That heart which would be pierced, that heart which would be broken. She had an open and receptive heart. And that's obvious to us in how she heard and how she responded to the angel Gabriel at the Annunciation. She might easily have closed her heart. She might easily have panicked of what she was hearing. She could so easily have turned a deaf ear to the angel. But instead, she managed to remain open, to listen to God's invitation, to God's message. So she had an open and a receptive heart. She had a generous and a responsive heart. Or in the words of St. Luke, which I love, the words he uses to describe those who receive the seed of God's word into rich soil, Luke says that they are people with a noble and generous heart. Well, Mary certainly had a noble and a generous heart. It was a heart that was responsive. And that response that she gave so generously, fiat mihi secundum verbum tuum, let your word be done. That response led to the word being conceived and taking flesh in her womb. So she is wonderfully generous and responsive in her heart. We're told again by Luke, not just once but a number of times, we're told that Mary pondered things in her heart, which simply means that she was a thoughtful she was a contemplative woman. Her heart was thoughtful. It was contemplative. In other words, she reflected very deeply about what was happening around her. She wasn't going to simply live on the surface of life. She wasn't going to live on the outside of things. She wanted to understand, to have a deeper grasp of what was happening. And that's why she responded, that's why she reflected, why she pondered in her heart. Um, she wanted to discern what God was doing, what God was up to. She also, of course, had a very sensitive and kindly heart, able to notice when someone was in need, always ready to do whatever she could do to help. And we see that, wonderfully we see it, in two Gospels. We see it in the Annunciation, when she went to her aged cousin Elizabeth in order to assist her to be of service to her. And we see it again at the marriage feast of Cana. She noticed, she realized the dilemma that the newlywed couple were in 
and she asked Jesus to rescue them. So Mary is the one who sees, who notices. She has a sensitive and a kindly heart. She had a brave heart. It took enormous courage to walk with Jesus in his suffering, to see him crucified, nailed to the tree. And it took courage to stand, to remain faithful, to be there right to the end. Steadfast, faithful, courageous. And finally, of course, and this is what draws so many to this novena every week, Mary had, Mary has a mother's heart. When we invoke her, when we pray, ask her to pray for us, we call her our mother of perpetual help. We do that because we know that her heart is open to receive us. Her heart is sensitive and kind. She has a heart which ponders, understands what God is doing in our lives. She has a heart which has bravely borne great suffering and anguish. So she knows what it's like for us in our suffering, in our need and in our anguish. We come to her because we know that she has a heart which will respond to us generously. And this is why we conclude the Novena Prayer always mother of sorrows, help us through the trials and disappointments of life. Help us not to lose heart. May we share with you and your son the joy of having courageously faced up to all the challenges of life. Amen. And so we bring all our prayers to her. I've read all the petitions that were placed at the shrine. I've read the petitions that came online. And here's a little selection of them. Dear Mother, please pray to your divine Son to help my brother who has COVID, is really ill. Please, um, please help him overcome this awful illness and get back home with his children. Dear Mother, I lost my wife last month and I'm finding it hard to cope with her loss especially at night. My kids are my rock, but they also feel the loss of their mother. Please ask your son to give us in this uh, moment strength and help for the months and the years ahead. Dear Mother, my family are going to a wedding. Please keep them safe and not to go into crowds and think wisely and realize that COVID is still here and to think about other people. Dear Mother, please pray for my granddaughter's 
boyfriend and my son-in-law that they will see sense and get the vaccine. I worry they will get COVID and be unwell. Dear Mother of Perpetual Help, pray to your Divine Son. We as a family are in excruciating difficulty. Right now, I'd say we all feel a terrible helplessness about things. We have prayed for years for an improvement, fervently, every day, and our belief is still there. But we've had many knockbacks. Please help me as the father and husband to be upbeat and persevering, not just for appearance sake, but because it is my focus. And finally, dear mother of perpetual help, please pray to your divine son for me. I bought a new car for the first time, but can't relax in it and fear I'm going to crash into someone or something, and I worry that I'm over my head with this new car. Please help me to drive safely and enjoy my first car and always be able to pay for the car. So we pray for that intention. We pray for all your own intentions as we kneel now, if you're able to kneel, and we'll pray the Adapted Novena Prayer. Sorry, I'm asking you to kneel. Don't even think of kneeling. There are no kneelers. Mother of perpetual help, with the greatest confidence, we come before your holy picture to beseech your intercession. We think of your mother at the foot of the cross. Your heart must have bled to see your son in agony, but your joy was great when he rose from the dead, victorious over the powers of evil. Mother of sorrows, Pray for us in this time of trial. Help us not to lose heart. Intercede for your people who are afflicted with coronavirus. Comfort your people who are vulnerable and anxious. Protect healthcare workers who put their lives at risk. Inspire our leaders to make good decisions. Change our hearts that all may act responsibly. Teach us to trust in God's love and mercy and to share with you the joy of having courageously faced up to all the challenges of life. Amen. Sanctify these gifts for your honor, Lord, knowing that I love and serve you is enough reward. All that I am, all that I do, all that I have I offer now to you all that I dream, all that I pray, all that I'll ever make I give to you today. Take and sanctify these gifts for your honor, Lord, knowing that I love and serve you 
is enough reward All that I am All that I do All that I'll ever have I offer now to you My sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Lord, accept the gifts of your people as we honor the suffering and death of Saints Cornelius and Cyprian. The Eucharist gave them courage to offer their lives for Christ. May it keep us faithful in all our trials. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father all-powerful and ever-living God. Your holy martyrs, Cornelius and Cyprian, followed the example of Christ and gave their life for the glory of your name. Their death reveals your power shining through our human weakness. You choose the weak and make them strong in bearing witness to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. In our unending joy we echo on earth the song of the angels in heaven as they praise your glory forever. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Mm -hmm. 
Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Noel, our Bishop, and all who lead and serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 So with great trust and confidence, we pray for the coming of God's kingdom. Our Father, Father who art, who art in, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will, will be done on earth as, as it, is it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of all the world. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of all the world. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of all the world. Grant us your peace, grant us your peace, grant us your peace, O Lord.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are, you, are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter, enter under my roof, roof but, only but only say, say the, word, the word, and my, and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. The body of Christ. So we invite you to come to Holy Communion, coming up the center aisle and going back by the side aisles. We'll give Holy Communion to those of you in the top half of the church and then in the bottom half. The celiac hosts will be available at St. Joseph's Shrine and then at St. Alphonsus Shrine for those in the bottom half of the church. But most of all, we keep encouraging you to be conscious, very aware of that safe distance between yourself and the person in front of you. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I am the that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. In thee, O Lord, I put my trust in thee, O Lord. I put my trust in thee, O Lord. I put my trust. Be still and know that I am still and know that I am a God. Be still and know that I am God. In thee, O Lord, I put my trust. In thee, O Lord, I put my trust. In thee, O Lord, I put my trust. I'll now read out an act of spiritual communion <coughs> by St. Alphonsus de Liguri. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, 
and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, Praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. So I'll now read out a few of our thanksgiving prayers. Dear Mother of Perpetual Help, with grateful hearts we join you in thanking God for once more coming to my aid. After a long wait, I finally got an appointment at hospital. Thank you, your child. Dear Mother of Perpetual Help, thank you for giving me strength and hope this past year. I have come through cancer treatment, and I take great comfort with the Masses and Novena every week. 
dear Mother Perpetual Help, thank you for my daughter who got good results in her final exams. And finally, dear Mother, dear Lady of Perpetual Help, thank you for answering my petition in curing a mother and her newborn premature baby of coronavirus. When I asked for your help, they were both in ICU and now they're home. So now, Father, will lead us in our thanksgiving prayer. O Mother of Perpetual Help, with grateful hearts we join you in thanking God for all the wonderful things he has done for us, especially for giving us Jesus, your Son, as our Redeemer. O God, our Creator, we thank you for the gift of life and all the gifts of nature, our senses and faculties, our talents and abilities. We thank you for creating us in your image and likeness and for giving us this earth to use and develop, to respect and cherish. Despite our failures, you continue to show your love for us today by increasing the life of your spirit in us at the Eucharistic table. Finally, we thank you, loving Father, for giving us Mary, the mother of your son, to be our mother of perpetual help. We are grateful for all the favors we have received through her intercession. We pray that those past favors may inspire us to greater confidence in your loving mercy and to seek the aid of our mother of perpetual help. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, by the example of your martyrs, Cornelius and Cyprian, and by the sacrament we have received, make us strong in the Spirit, so that we may offer faithful witness to the truth of your gospel. Through Christ our Lord. So again, we ask you, as you're leaving by the two exits at the top of the church, to do so safely by keeping a safe distance between yourself and the person in front of you. You'll see the baskets there at the door. We're grateful for any contribution that you make. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go now in the peace of Christ glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks. Hail, Queen of Heaven, the ocean star, guide of the wanderer here, below, thrown on life's surge, we claim thy care, save us from peril and from woe. Mother of Christ, star of the sea, Pray for the wanderer, pray for me. O gentle, chaste, and spotless maiden, we sinners make our prayers through thee. Remind thy son that he has paid the price of our iniquity. Virgin most pure, star of the sea, Pray for the sinner, pray for.